everyone views my Kumna chat. And today, doing something that I've been meaning to do for a long time on the channel, and that's showing you guys how you can get Unreal visuals into Unity. Now, whenever someone asks me about Unity versus Unreal, I basically I'll tell them that you can pretty much do whatever you want in either engine, and you can get pretty close to the same effects. Some things might be more complicated, but regardless, they are both really flexible engines that allow you to do a lot. And so just porting over the defaults from Unreal into Unity isn't really that hard, which we'll do today. So speaking of which, let's kind of dive into this. This is just a fresh Unity project. You can see here, have just a main camera, directional light, haven't even saved the scene. And let's just go ahead, click on our main camera right here. And under rendering path, you can see we have a few options. By default, it just uses the graphic settings, which I'll show in a second. But these graphic settings basically let you select forward rendering as the default mode. In Unreal, this is actually deferred rendering. Now, at a super, super high level, what that means is that in deferred rendering, it's basically how models are rendered onto the scene and how light is processed onto them, as specifically, I guess, from the, the shader side of things. So with deferred rendering, what you're doing is actually rendering out all the models and then applying your light as kind of a post effect. Now, the reason you do this is because it's a lot cheaper on the post-processing on a 2D side as opposed to on the 3D side to, to render out all your light and just kind of calculate where the rays bounce. So by going into the, the deferred side, you're actually going to be saving on some of your light effects, but deferred rendering as a whole is a little more cost intensive. So you might want to do this on the PC side. That said, if you have a lot and lot of lights on your scene, you might want to choose deferred rendering over forward. So that's just kind of some high level things. Now, when we do that, you might get this warning here, and that's because you're not allowed to use anti-aliasing with your uh, deferred rendering. So you have to go ahead, make sure that it's checked off. And speaking of anti-aliasing, why don't we just go ahead, go to project settings, quality. And so here, pixel light count, you, won't, you can keep this pretty high with deferred rendering um, as opposed to uh, regular rendering. You can also go ahead, turn off, whoops, keep the uh, textures on and then just dif disable the anti-aliasing there. So other than that, you can keep these quality settings the same because we won't really touch them. Next up, we need to go to the asset store. So this process might change depending on which version of Unity you're using. But in this current version, what we're going to be looking for is post-processing. And it's a package that's built by Unity. I think they're working on integrating this into the actual main project of Unity. But as of right now, you just need to go to the asset store, go ahead, import, and this takes a little bit, so I'll catch you when this is done. Once you have post-processing installed into your project, you should just get a folder right down here. And while we're in the project scene, might as well go ahead and just save our scene as you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to name it UE4, just so we have a reference to it on file. And to use post-processing, it's actually really easy. All you need to do is right-click here, do Create, and Post-Processing File. So we'll just call this uh, UE4 Template. Yeah, you Again, name it whatever you want. And these are some of the options that come with the UE4 Template that we're just creating a post-processing file for. To actually put it onto our scene, we just go to our camera, add a post-processing behavior, and drag this file onto the profile. Now we can basically check how our post-processing actually works in real time. So if we go here to UE4 template, I'm going to go ahead and disable the fog. You might want to add anti-aliasing because now we're working with a deferred rendering where you don't have the anti-aliasing. So if you want any sort of thing, you can add that as a post-processing effect. It's not as clean as the forward rendering version, but it works nonetheless. And we'll actually go through, and the two main things are bloom and color grading. These are what's going to really sell your scene as an unreal scene. So for starters, go ahead, just click both of them. Uh, obviously, <laughs> looking at it right now, it obviously does not look like it, but we, we need to tweak them a little bit so that that happens. So Bloom is basically it is a post-processing filter. I mean, you might be, if you've used Instagram before, it's basically a matrix multiplication over the whole image that enhances the brighter areas and dims a little bit the darker areas. So if you specifically, what we'll go ahead here is just increase the intensity. If you look at the whites here, they're really glowing. 
and you get a nice little fog effect that comes with it, or a little blur, whatever you want to call that. So you can you can tweak that however you want. And here we might want to go for like say one. Again, tweak it however you really want. And the thing that's really going to sell it is switching our color grading from a tone mapper that's neutral to a filmic one. So you get a nice little darker edges here, kind of like a vignette, and it really kind of pops out the the blues and reds. So for example, let's just start building a scene here, and pretty much this sells it, and you can tweak these settings to, to get certain flavors however you want. But let's go ahead, just add a plane. So again, because this is white, it's, uh, it's got that really light and white glow to it. Obviously, you don't want this much, so we might want to tone that down a bit. And let's just also add a, I don't know, a cube. Let's go there. Again, super white, but let's give it a different color by just going to our material. Let's call this, I don't know, let's make it a red color. You, if you want this to be PBR, you can do that. You can really switch it to whatever you want. I'm just going to go for an unlit red and just drag that onto there. And yeah, okay, so <laughs> it's definitely really, really bright with the bloom. Probably be dial back the intensity to, I don't know, uh, like maybe a point, point 0.26 and again you can play with all of these to get whatever effect you want. Threshold is really kind of what colors it's looking at to, to really add that blur to it, how much of a softness you want to it and the radius of that effect. So you have a lot of different things to play. You can even add dirt to, to get a certain style but with that that pretty much does it. That's really all of the things that you can tinker around with. Obviously, you have a lot more other pause processing that you can play with if you want like a depth of field to, to make things look a little more realistic. So you can see, uh, just there we go. <laughs> and that's like a really bad depth of field. But needless to say, you can play around with all of these. Something to keep in mind, and this is actually a problem with Unreal unless you know what you're doing, a lot of this stuff will tend to lead to bad performance. So if you're looking at mobile, if you're looking at VR, those things you might want to turn a lot of this off, specifically stuff that requires a depth map because copying a depth map around for a giant scene is pretty, pretty memory intensive. And so if you ever want to check out what is happening with your memory, you can just go to your window, go to profiler, and go ahead and drag that on screen. And if you just hit play, you'll get some statistics on how, how bad things are. And if I remember correctly, you also get a post-processing uh, allocation as well. All right, so I ended up pausing it just to find it. It's under camera.render, camera image effects, and you can just drill through to just see, like, here it's taking up 1% of the total CPU. So, I mean, 1% in a simple scene that is getting, what, 100 plus frames per second, it's, it's not a big deal, but that could easily be a huge factor when you're dealing on mobile. So some things you want to keep in mind that you're, you're always trading off visual fidelity for performance. So keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, Profiler is such a great tool. Also, the Frame Debugger is also a great tool. So hope you enjoyed this quick video. Again, really simple to, to get visual effects doing really nice things. And it's all pretty much built into Unity minus the processing that you just need to drag in. So thanks so much for watching this, and hopefully it helps you get some really cool looking effects within Unity. Can't wait to see what everyone <laughs> makes. And if you're new to the channel by any chance, go ahead, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this on VR, AR, a bunch of new stuff specifically in Unity. And if you really like this video, go ahead, hit that like button because that helps us out a ton. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man. And I'm signing out.